of them now. I'm a huge Av geek, and uh, I've got an upcoming episode here for you guys where we're reviewing a flight from Spokane to Mesa Gateway, which is obviously the primary reason why I'm down here in the US. And I could not resist the chance to visit the Historic Flight Foundation. Follow them for a bit, and uh, I love what they do. So it's time to check them out and check out some historic aircraft. I would get stopped by a train. You can leave the small town, but the small town, it never leaves you. <laughs> oh, I love my hometown. Growing up in a small town, best thing ever. The train teaches you patience. It's a tool to teach you. It teaches you patience. There's the end. Woohoo! <laughs> We're almost there. We're like a hundred meters away. And I saw the arms coming down. I was like, no, so close. But here we go. Historic Flight in Spokane, USA has a collection of rare, fully restored, and flight worthy aircraft spanning from the 20s to 50s, showing just how far and how quick our world changed in under 50 years. But this is no ordinary museum. You get to touch explore, hear, and experience these artifacts. Heck, I helped push a supermarine Spitfire into the hangar. So this here is a Beechcraft D-17S, and in its day, this was the Rolls-Royce of aircraft. It's called a Staggerwing. It's staggered there. Instead of like a traditional biplane. right here is a B-25 Mitchell. This one here was flown in D-Day. You can tell it was flown in D-Day because of the black and white stripes because no Nazi aircraft had those black and white stripes. So the Allies painted those black and white stripes. So from the ground, you can tell that hey, it's an Allied aircraft. Now this one here flew for the Commonwealth, either Britain or uh, Canada or any, any of the other Commonwealth countries that were in the war because on the back, it has the Commonwealth symbol, not the star that's associated with the Americans. So it's an American plane, but a lot of the American planes were then either sold or leased or rented out for uh, to the Commonwealth for them to fly. Now this one was unusual because of the amount of missions it flew. Look at all those bombs. The big bomb is a hundredth mission, and the black bomb is a night mission. This one is nicknamed Grumpy, maybe because it was hard to start. I don't know. But this one flew well over 100 missions. Very unusual because usually by mission 35, these were all shot up or used parts. All those B-25s that were in the Doolittle raids, this one is configured as a Doolittle plane. It's airborne. The first Army bomber ever to be launched from a carrier is safely in the air. Sweet 
move in without being discovered. They separate into groups to attack the several objectives carefully selected by means of accurate intelligence to ensure that only targets of military value will be hit. Imagine just sitting in here, looking out there, and all you're seeing is guys just coming at you, the enemy coming at you and shooting at you. You were really exposed in here. Wow. This was never supposed to be its own video, but hey, here we are. If you're interested in more from the Historic Flight Museum in Spokane, check them out at historicflight.org. I'll leave a link down in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Have fun. Get her done.